is the one thing which I absolutely love about this model is can you see that plastic metal wire grid, whatever they've got going on it. I absolutely love this stuff. If I turn it around, not seen that on another model before. Howdy, I'm Matt, and this is a quick overview to the LTE Rambler. Now, as you might be able to tell, I have already been on and built this model, and this is the quick overview version to the model. If you would like to see the full version, which is about 40 minutes, because there's an awful lot to discuss about this model, uh, I will put a link in the top right-hand corner for you. Now, with that said, this video really is aimed at those of you looking for the lowdown. So I tell you what, let's just get straight into the nitty-gritty straight away. The most obvious thing about this model is the wing cord is basically an exact copy of the Dart XL. Now, that is absolutely no big surprise to any of us because the designer of this model came from ZoHD uh, and I believe he was the creator or the designer of the original Dart XL and if once I get this wing off uh, I'll show you how close uh, the actual wing cord is. So what I will do up on your screen is show you this wing cord which is from the LTE Rambler and in the top of your screen you'll see the wing cord from a Dart XL almost exactly identical. So, with that out of the way, there's a couple of things which you just need to be aware of. The first itself is the camera mount. Now you'll notice that I have used a servo control horn to keep the lid down. Wasn't particularly impressed with the magnets in the lid on this one. Uh, and as such, I have made, uh, well, using the hole for the GPS puck, which is in the wrong place, they put it at the front, although it should be at the back, uh, is, and using the antenna tube, which they did include, which is probably gone on the desk here somewhere uh, in one of the bags uh, is that I have made a little latch mechanism for the lid because I that the magnets on mine are not very good anyway the point I was trying to make it does come with this extra piece of foam and you can see that at the moment there's a run cam 3s in there uh, you can mount that in the nose so that the front of this camera front of this model also would support a run cam 2s the next thing is, is the wing spars. Now, one thing which you need to go careful with uh, if you were to go on to purchase this model is underneath this black tape, which I've popped underneath just to cover up the pockets underneath the wings, is that there are two great big pockets underneath each wing. Now, if you look closely, is that you'll see that there's wire marks in the foam suggesting where the wiring should go. However, on your model, do not follow their suggested wiring because basically what they're suggesting you do is put a great big slit right next to a wing spar. So instead you'll notice that from the outside pocket here, uh, I've used a soldering iron to make my own trench in here uh, instead. So do not follow their suggested wiring because you should never have a slit right next to the main spar. Uh, and that is the main spar in a model. Uh, and just go careful of that one. Also, this pocket is too far out. Ideally, it needs to be about here somewhere because even if you've got a VTX, etc. Etc. or crossfire or another receiver, typically you've got a length of antenna which needs to go on the end which would then go out on the wing tip. So yeah, great that we've got the pockets on the wings but really, I know it's finicky, but really they need to be inside and also go careful of the suggested lines. Don't follow their suggested lines, make your own line through so you're not permanently weakening your model. Uh, next up is the foam is ridiculously shiny. Now when I first unboxed this I was hesitant to say whether it was a new mold which the model had come out of or it was just excess mounts and mold release. I came to the conclusion that this model is so new is that the mold is exceptionally shiny. Uh, so if you're going to be putting laminate on top of your model and you'll see how shiny mine is, that's because we've got a layer of laminate on top of here. Uh, I did, sat, it's one of the very rare models where I actually sanded the wings with some 240 grit paper uh, to actually have something, shi something grippy for the laminate to stick to. It was that shiny. Not a bad problem, I hasten to add, just something which you would need to be aware of should you go on and purchase one of these models. The lid magnets are not very good for mine at least. The rear ones are absolutely fine. The front ones, not so much. So I have made that little catch on the top. Uh, and again, I've had other models here before where the lid's been blown off and that has left to a very disappointing experience. That's the very politically correct way of saying that. Uh, next up is that I am absolutely shocked 
that the designer didn't learn from their previous mistakes, which was with the Dart XL version one, is that they didn't put any supports in the nose. Uh, hence, we had an issue with the noses falling off models. And you'll see that I took one look at this model uh, and I've put some four mil carbon rods in the nose and just hot glued them in there. And the combination of using laminate and these four mil carbon rods has absolutely transformed the strength of the nose itself. And I now don't have any reservations about the nose falling off in a less than ideal landing. Uh, next up is the Elevons. Again, something which you need to be aware of, the hinge in here on both of my Elevons, both of them broke in varying degrees. One just literally broke, I think it was this one, yeah, if you look really closely, is up there, it broke just there. The other one, for the vast majority, the Elevon surface came off. Uh, so what I've done on mine, if you look closely just there, there is a piece of laminate which I've put in to make a, a new hinge for the Elevon. I've done that on both sides. Now, if you're not laminating your model, sellotape, worst case, would work, although Blendum tape would be the ideal solution to that. If you've not come across that before, I've got a separate video on how to use Blendum tape for exactly this purpose. Now, is that something, and again, We'll come to that in a moment. Uh, the next one is the wing tips are rather flimsy. Now, like I said, I put some laminate on these, uh, but these wing tips are really, really flimsy. And again, it doesn't help that we've got a great big hole in the end of the wing tip, which is not helping matters. I can foresee later on is myself putting some uh, carbon strip or rod in here just to stiffen up that wing tip. Uh, I do believe over uh, a larger number of flights that will become more apparent just through the creasing in the laminate. Although I have mitigated a lot of that by putting laminate on top of the model. Those of you which are not gonna put any covering on your models you may want to put a carbon rod in there in the wingtip uh, because when you get it and you feel it you'll go yeah Matt that is quite flexible and the last one is that this model did come with some bottom skids which I think would be fine oh I found it right okay I'll stick I'll pretend that one's on there did come with some bottom skids they're a bit weird uh, and as you can tell, oh, I found it, uh, is that I did take them off to laminate the model, uh, and I, I'm frankly not gonna put them on. Uh, they are a good idea if you're landing on tarmac, but those of you landing on grass, that's just gonna catch uh, and dig in or drag the model. So I have put the rear ones back on, but in reality, good idea, but not the best. Right, that's all of the negatives, minor points out of the way. I wanted to get those out of the way so we could do the quick version and have a quick look at it. Those things aside, the wing cord is nice and deep. That is gotta be, I'll put it on the bench and we'll see on there. 26 centimeters worth of wing cord uh, in there. This is gonna be a very light and floaty model and from what I've been seeing and read is that most people will agree with that if you keep it under about 1.2 kilos. It will break down, you would be able to fit this into a backpack. I like the only piece which needs to be glued is this lid section on here and it does come with some double-sided tape in there to make the putting of this kit together, very, very simple. All of the things which I just covered a few moments ago, they are, most people, most of you watching this, will have things in your arsenal, on your workbench, uh, to be able to tackle or uh, resolve any of those issues which I pointed out a few moments ago. So now staying with the positives, is the one thing which I absolutely love about this model, is can you see that plastic metal wire grid, whatever they've got going on it, I absolutely love this stuff. If I turn it around, not seen that on another model before, really, really like the look of it. I am quite impressed by it, and you'll notice that I've got I still need to put the FPV camera in the front of there. Uh, it does give it a very unique look, and it did come with a reel of double-sided foam tape to actually stick this in, although, albeit on mine, I'm just gonna go and use hot glue. And if we turn this one upside down and look up the rear end of her, uh, is that they've also got a massive, great big air hole on the back. So, yeah, very, very curious to say the least. Huge, huge battery bay. Eight inches by four inches, that hole is in there. Uh, and that gives you a massive opportunity to use a very, very wide range of batteries in this model. So very, very curious uh, when it comes to that. 
Also, we, you'll notice that we have some fins here on the model. So we've got two on each wing, two in the vertical stabiliser, and also up here in the nose as well. I do think they're a bit more of a gimmick, but you'll notice that I did actually fit them because I do think they look pretty cool. So, uh, actual, <laughs> actual aerodynamics in the sky, somewhat questionable, but 10 out of 10 for coolness, so I glued mine in because I do think they look pretty cool. One metre wingspan on there, decent wing loading, because of the size of the wings, we've had other models which are very short wings and we just take one look at them, we understand why they probably didn't fly very, very well. We can take one look at this one and think to ourselves, actually, with that great big battery bay, huge great big wings, we think this one might fly pretty well. Uh, I have put a inappropriate motor on the back of mine and the reason why I've done that is every other single reviewer is going to put a 22, 16, 12, 50 kV Sunny Sky motor on the back, stick iNav in it, and then gently potter around with it. That's not what we're going to do at Rag the Nuts Off. I've put a disproportional 1800 kV motor on the back with a 6x4 prop and we're going to smash the nuts out of it on 4S to see how aerodynamically fun it is in the sky. But I've got to put my hand up, I will load it up with a sunny sky motor, iNav and some lion packs later on, assuming it stays in one piece after that first nut racking. So, there we go, that is the first look at the LTE Rambler. I am not apologising for giving you all the bad points first, because I wanted to get those out of the way. I do genuinely like the look of this model. It is very, very curious. I don't know how much I'm going to like that wing cord itself, because I didn't like it very much in the Dart XL. But, new foam, new day. We'll see how it does, and also we'll see how aerobatic it is. Also, I want to say a big thumbs up, and I want to say a thank you to Banggood for supporting this video. The reason being is that I've had my eye on this one since it came out on the Banggood website. Uh, I was speaking to the lovely lady over there, and they put a free one in my orders and sent it across so I could review it, which is happy days because we got this uh, literally the day before, sorry, two days before a flying weekend. So big thank you to Banggood for supporting this video it does mean that me and you get to see this model uh, before most other people and like I said I'm taking a slightly different look at it with a disproportionately more capable motor shall we say on the back of it as well so with that said that's the quick version of the LTE Rambler RS first impressions do like it but must remember if you're new here is that we always hold off final judgment on a model until we get it in the sky and the reason the reason being is that we've had some equally good looking models here come across the desk some have flown exceptionally well some have flown exceptionally not very well <laughs> shall we keep it that way so with that said, if you're new here, don't forget to press the red subscribe button and of course press the bell notification so that YouTube notifies you when the next video is out. That could be the maiden for this LTE Rambler RS. It could be the iNav maiden, we could be trying to do some distance with it or some endurance with it as well, or we could just be smashing the nuts out of it on its maiden. So with that said, big thank you from me to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench to look at the Rambler RS. Really curious on this one. Can't wait to smash it around the sky. I am very curious to say the least. So with that said, for myself, Matt, cheerios.